Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how to use a backwards to model this beam as 2D planar stress and analysis. So it's a cantilever with a 4 kN load at its tip. It's 0 0.1 meters deep and has a thickness of 0 0.12 meters. So that works out to give us the moment of inertia of 1 times 10 to the power negative 5 meters to the power 4. A Young's modulus of 200 gigapascal. We're getting a tip displacement. We use the exact solution as 6.667 times in the power negative 4. And the exact stress at the tip, uh, the exact stress in the member also be 20 megapascals. So this is what you're going to model. So I'm just going to fire up Abacus and we're going to continue from there. Okay, so I have Abacus fired up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a part. So I'm going to double click on the part. It's a 2D element, it's deformable, it's shell element. I'm going to set the limits to 1 since the maximum length we expect is like 1 meter. So once that is done, I'm just going to click on this rectangle and I'm just going to draw a rectangle like that in this size. And I'm going to click to ensure that the horizontal and vertical constraints in terms of length are set. So shift and click on this and then here. I click on this. Click on that. I'm just going to show the horizontal constraints as I click on the length and I dimension this as one. Bring it to view. Then I dimension this side as 0 0.1. Okay, so I'm done with this. I can safely exit. And here I have my element created. So I'm going to create a material for it. I'm going to set the name default to material one. We're going to change it mechanical elasticity. I'm going to set the properties here. Young's modulus is 200.6. Poisson ratio I'm going to use 0.3. Okay with that. So once the material is created, I go ahead and create a section. Then I'll it's supposed to be solid homogeneous, so I click continue. I set the plain stress thickness of this material to 0 0.12. I set material is material 1. I go ahead, okay. And I expand this and actually assign the section. So I double click on this, I select this, then there's a section I created. So, okay. So I've now assigned the section. So basically, what I'm going to do now is just create another step so to explain steps again okay so step so if I didn't say dynamic analysis I'll have various steps where various time steps where the loading changes but here since start analysis I need an extra step where I'm going to actually apply the load the burning condition is going to set at the initial step which already exists and it's going to propagate to that load application step so I'll double click on this and now I'm going to choose I'm going to name the step Load application. Okay. The procedure type I'm going to use linear permutation for static analysis. Continue. Then I have a load application step. I'll go ahead and uh, assemble the material first. So I come here and assemble. I expand it. I double click on this. Then uh, I assemble create instance and I'm going to create sets that's where I'm going to set my boundary conditions so I'm going to double click on this I'm just going to leave the default name and I'm going to select this edge I'm going to click on that so once that is set what I can do is um, I come now I'm going to create my boundary condition so I double click on my boundary condition suppose we have fixed end it's supposed to be applied at the initial step and it's going to propagate here which is if this first option because I'm going to create a fix and constrain continue I'm going to go and select the sets that I just chose continue I'm going to choose the last option to fix all the degrees of freedom just click OK so that has fixed that edge for me then I apply the load so I double click on the load it's a point load let me just name it point load it's going to be applied 
at the load application step it's a concentrated force continue I click the edge then I set the vertical to minus 4 it's pointing downward so now I've fixed the end I've applied the load what I'm essentially going to do now is going to mesh so I double click on the mesh the first thing I'm going to do when I come to mesh is to ensure that I'm using the quadrilateral element so I click on mesh controls and I set it to quad okay structure I'm okay then I'm going to mesh according to I'm going to seed according to the edges so I go to seed edges I click on this edge I'm going to essentially create two rows so instead of by size I use by number and I bring it to apply so essentially you see it's actually meshed it into two there so I'm going to then come here and set this to two okay I'm going to select the top edge and I'm going to fix that to 19 essentially I'm going to create 38 elements but in all 60 nodes with 120 degrees of freedom so I apply I mesh that come here set this one to, to 19 and I apply and I want to make sure that the element I'm dealing with this okay I'm done the element I'm dealing with is a quad element so yeah it's a quad element a four node bilinear plane stretch quadrilateral that's what I want so once that is set then I can go ahead and mesh pat yes and basically what I'm left with is just to create the job and do the analysis so I'm going to double click here create a job I'm going to leave the default names okay then I can go ahead right click on this submit so you can see that it's going to update to show me the result so it's running and once it's done completed successfully I can right click and view the results if I check the deflector ship it deflects how I want it can monitor the stresses can plot the stresses nicely so essentially just in the viewport you can actually monitor what's happening if I come to viewport viewport options I can set the font of the legend to 14 so I can see stuff clearly so you can see that I mean the stresses for this element for this modeling is about around 17.9 about 18 and now who we're looking for is actually 20 megapascals so it's kind of close but it's not gotten there yet if you look at the displacements it's like 5.9 we're looking for 6.67 so it's kind of there but not there so what I can quickly show you in terms of modifications I'll quickly come back here back to mesh then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump up the elements so I'm going to go first of all I'm going to delete the mesh region and I'm going to go to seed edges I'm going to select this edge and I'm going to bump it up to 4 apply I'm going to select this edge I'm going to bump it up to 4 okay. then I'm going to also increase this by setting it to moving all the way up to 39 so if you're following what I'm doing I'm just trying to get the elements increase to refine the mesh and see how the values are going to work out so once I'm done I can quickly mesh parts again and go back and run my analysis okay, okay. so submit so it's running it's completed I can view my results check my deflector ships and all but let's look at the stresses you see it's now about 19.5 is getting close these are not actual values they are estimating so we can actually see 
by printing a report, which I'm going to do in a second. When you look at the displacement, so you realize that actually it's about 6.51 here. It's getting closer. So a much more refined mesh is giving us something which is better. I'm just going to go ahead and print a report so we can see what's happening. So I go, I went to report, fill out, fill out, put set up. I'm just going to change the part of the file to somewhere I can easily get it to. So desktop, I'm just going to make it XYZ. Okay. Variable, I'm just going to print out the stress value. And I'm going to print out the displacement value also, or displacement value, so we see what's happening. So in terms of displacement, okay. So let me just print this and let's go and see what's happening. So there we have it. If we scroll down, it's approximating that the stress actually is about 20.81 the maximum, so a bit above even what we are looking for. So, it's, and the displacement is about 6.49. So we are getting there. It's it's getting there with a finer mesh. We are getting closer to the result. So what I'm going to do is just show you the constant strain triangle element quickly. Then I can wrap up this video. So. What I can do is I just come back here, quickly open and fire up the mesh, go back, and what I'm going to do, I go to mesh controls, I'm going to change it from the quad to the try. Okay, it's going to delete the meshes, I'm going to select the element section, I'm going to go to element type, I'm going to ensure I said linear triangle, so a three node linear triangular plane stress element, so the constant strain triangle. So. I'm going to maintain the mesh and everything. I'm going to mesh it and uh, run it again just for this to quickly do the comparison. So you can see how we switch back and forth through this. Okay, so if I go to the results now, you can see it's now created a concentration triangle for me. Okay, so let's quickly, let me delete this file and quickly print one in its place so we can, we can do some comparison here. I go to report, I print out the values, then when I come, so let's, let's look at this one. This one, the stress, with the same number of degrees of freedom, we are getting the stress to be 13.4, whilst the quadratic element is going to be 20 point something, so it means that the quadratic approximated quickly to the result. Here we are getting the displacement as 5.49 while the actual solution was 6.667. So it's quite off and a much more refinement would actually get it up. So just wanted to quickly show you how you can go about this. So I hope it proves, use, proves useful. You can actually go ahead and modify various elements as you want and just do your comparison. Yeah, and one quick thing too, Abacus actually has um, uh, a way where you can actually edit the file. So if you had a file you, want, you wanted to see the output files, you could actually come to edit keywords, model, and there you have it. There's an Abacus file that was terminated and it's actually doing all the nice back end stuff where you can actually modify stuff here. So you can actually also create your own file and come and import it here as a model if you wanted and actually choose an input file to actually do load into it so there you have it so we'll end here and hope